Hi, this is Laura Slominski, a math teacher at Edina High School, and today we will be looking at the notes for section 10.5, adding and subtracting rational functions. And you can see the objective is that I can add and subtract rational func functions. Like fractions, rational expressions can be added. First, find a common denominator using the least common denominator. So this is what we worked on yesterday in the second half of 10.4. And then you're going to multiply it by the appropriate form of 1 to write the equivalent rational expression. And then finally add the numerator. So really it's the same concept. When you add two fractions um, together, you're finding the common denominator, and then you can add them. So first example here, add x plus 2 divided by x plus x squared to x squared over x squared plus 2. So again, first we're going to find the least common denominator. My first denominator is x squared. My second denominator, if I factor it, is a GCF of x, so it's x times x plus 1. So if I look at my first denominator, x squared is going to be part of my least common denominator. But then I see that I have an x in my second denominator, since I already have an x and it's squared. I don't need that again, um, because that's already there. And then I need to times it by x plus 1. So the least common denominator is going to be x squared times x plus 1. So now you can see that we took the first fraction from the problem and put it here. We took the second fraction from the problem and put it over here. We're going to add them together, but in order to do that, they need to have the least common denominator, so I need to multiply by something to give it the common denominator. So right now, the first yellow fraction just has x squared, so it needs the x plus 1. So I would need to multiply the bottom by x plus 1, and I'm allowed to do that as long as I multiply the top by that as well. Now, the second one's a little trickier. If I look at the second one, I have x squared plus x. I could think about that as x times x plus 1. So this one actually already has the x plus 1. The problem is it only has 1x, so I would need to multiply by x. So I multiply by x over x. And then it says multiply each numerator. Okay, what that means is I'm going to take x plus 2 times x plus 1. You could rewrite it so that it looks a little cleaner. x plus 2 times x plus 1 over, and then this does have the denominator of x squared times x plus 1, plus I have x squared times x, so that's just going to be x cubed. And again, when I do the x times the x, that does give me x squared times x plus 1. I need to expand out the top of my first fraction. You can either use the mo box model or distribution. I would take the first x and distribute it through to both things. I get x squared plus 1x. Distribute the 2 to both things. I get plus 2x plus 2. And then over, I'll write this out. I wouldn't usually write out all these steps, but just to show you on this one, plus x cubed over x squared times x plus 1. And last but not least, so these two terms are going to be 3x. Um, and last but not least, I'm going to write it all out as x squared plus 3x plus 2 plus x cubed over x squared times x plus 1. And finally, I do want to make sure I have it in standard form, so the only thing that needs to change is I need to put the x cubed first. So x cubed plus x squared plus 3x plus 2 all divided by x squared times x plus 1. You'll see that I left the bottom in factor form. I will never leave the top in factor form. I'm always going to expand that out, but we are okay with you leaving the bottom in factor form. Okay, so that's my final answer there. Um, subtraction is the same idea, except obviously you're going to subtract the second fraction in the end, um, but the process doesn't change. You're still going to find the least common denominator. When I look at 2x squared over x squared minus 5x to find the least common denominator like we practiced, again, we need to make sure that we um, look at factored form. If I wanted to think about x squared as x times x, I could, but otherwise just think about it as x squared. So I see that the first fraction has an x and the second one has an x squared in the denominator. Remember, we always take the higher power, so it's going to be x squared and then times the x minus 5. I need to make sure I include that factor there. When I go to look at this next step, when I have to multiply by whatever I need to give each individual fraction a common denominator, I need to remember that the first fraction was factored as x times x minus 5. 
So if I need it to actually have an x squared, it means I need to multiply the top and the bottom by x. Okay, so I'm going to think about x squared minus 5, x as the x times x minus 5. Minus 1 over x squared. Now since the 1 over x squared already has the x squared, I just need to multiply it by x minus 5. Which means I also need to multiply the top by x minus 5. Now as I look at that, we are going to multiply 2x squared times x, which gives me 2x cubed, over, now I have x times x on the bottom, which is x squared times x minus 5, and assuming I did everything correctly, it should match what I got up here as the least common denominator. Don't forget that it's minus, and then I have 1 times x minus 5. Um, well, if I distribute that, I get 1x. 1 times negative 5 is minus 5 over x squared times x minus 5. Now, because it's subtraction, when I go to rewrite it as a single fraction, now that they have the common denominators, x squared times x minus 5, I can bring down the 2x cubed as my first term. But then since it's a minus, I bring down my minus. And a couple ways you could think about it. For right now, I'm going to put the x minus 5 in parentheses. Um, ultimately, you have to make sure that the minus sign applies to everything on top, which means all of the signs flip. Um, so you could get away with skipping a step, but I need to make sure that I make it a negative 2x cubed minus x. Then I have a minus a negative 5, which makes it a plus 5. All over x squared times x minus 5. So you can see that again I left my denominator in factored form, but my the top of or the numerator of my fraction has to be in standard form. Okay, so on the back there's four more examples. I'm actually going to have you cross out number 5. You can just cross that out and you can worry about that on the video. Um, but there's four more examples. I would encourage you to pause the video, try them, and then check your answers in the end. For number one, I know that um, x squared is just x squared over 1, which means my least common denominator is just going to be 1 times 1 minus x. So it's 1 minus x. So when I rewrite this, I write it as x squared over 1 times, and I need to multiply the top and bottom by 1 minus x, because that does not um, in there. And then plus 1 over, and then the 1 minus x would just be times 1 over 1, so I can leave that. Now, you might start to see as you go that you don't need to write it as two separate fractions. You could have just made it all a single fraction in the beginning. And now when I go to simplify the top, I get x squared minus x cubed over 1 minus x plus 1 over 1 minus x. And now since I do have... Um, a common denominator 1 minus x. I just add the three things on top and I do want them in standard form. So I'm going to put my negative x cubed first plus x squared plus 1 all over 1 minus x. So since the um, bottom doesn't have anything factored, I, I just need to make sure that I have my top, my top in uh, standard form and my bottom can stay in factored form. All right, number two. Hopefully you figured out that the least common denominator is going to be x times x plus 3, which means when I rewrite the first fraction, it's x right now, so it needs to be multiplied by x plus 3 to make it a common denominator. Minus is going to be important. x over x plus 3, and that one is missing the x on the bottom, so I need to multiply by x over x. When I get to my next step, again, this is just 1 times these things. So the top of my first fraction is just x plus 3 over x times x plus 3. And then minus x times x on top is x squared over x times x plus 3. One common thing I have actually seen over the years is that people right now start trying to cancel things out. Notice that if I cancel right now, like the x plus 3, I'm back to where I started. So we're putting that least common denominator in so that we can do this final step where we can take the top x plus 3 minus x squared since there's only one piece we can do that 
x times x plus 3 on the bottom. And last but not least, let's put it in standard form that negative x squared should come first, plus x plus 3, all over x times x plus 3. And we can leave that as that. All right, so that was number 2. Number 3 got a little trickier. Um, first thing I wanted to do is write it in factor form. So I have x squared over x squared minus 4. You could use the box model, x-box method, where you have 0x in the middle, but it does factor as x plus 2 times x minus 2. Plus, and then you have an x plus 1 over x minus 2. So when I go to find my least common denominator, I've got an x plus 2. I've got an x minus 2. And then the x minus 2 of the second one is already there. So I'm done, which means that my first fraction is actually okay. x squared over x plus 2 times x minus 2 does not, oops, x minus 2, doesn't need to be multiplied by anything because it has the full least common denominator, plus x plus 1 over x minus 2. And I'm going to show you how I can save a step if I just write it as one fraction, knowing that I'm going to multiply the top and bottom by x plus 2, because that's what I need to make it have the common denominator. So now when I go to simplify, I have my common denominator, which is x plus 2 times x minus 2, which allows me to rewrite the top as x squared plus, but then I would have foiled this out. So I have another x squared plus 2x plus 1x plus 2. And again, you never have to show as many steps as I do. I just try to show how I process. Finally, I have an x squared plus an x squared, so that's a 2x squared. I have a 2x and a 1x, so plus 3x plus the 2 on the end over x plus 2 times x minus 2. And that should be your final answer. And last but not least, um, once again, I would factor first the denominator using the x-box method you could use. Factors is x minus 2 times x plus 1. This one again is subtraction, so I'll have to be careful with that. It's x over x plus 1, so my least common denominator is going to be x minus 2 times x plus 1. That's the first denominator, and then the x plus 1 is already there. Which means, once again, my first fraction is okay. 1 over x minus 2 times x plus 1 minus x over x plus 1. But I now know I need to multiply the bottom by x minus 2 to get the least common denominator. Therefore, I must multiply the top as well. When I go to my next step, again, now I can write my common denominator and write it as one fraction. I'm going to bring the 1 over, make it minus, and in parentheses I've got x squared minus 2x because I distributed that x through. But again, note that I put it in parentheses because now I have to apply that minus sign to both terms inside the parentheses. I have a negative times a negative is a positive 2x. And last but not least, we are going to write it in standard form. The negative x squared has to come first, plus 2x plus 1 over x minus 2 times x plus 1. And that, once again, would be your final answer. So, again, very similar to adding two fractions with numbers together. Find the least common denominator. Um, make both fractions have a, the least common denominator, and then combine. Thank you.